Hello, and thank you for taking the time to watch this film. The presentation is based on those given at the GP registration events held throughout England in May and June, and covers an introduction to CQC, an overview of the registration process, the application form, and how you can prepare. CQC was created by the Health and Social Care Act 2008. The Act introduced a new regulation system for England that covers all health, mental health and adult social care in England. The aim was to ensure that there was a consistent approach to regulating the quality and safety of care across the whole health and social care sector. People can expect services to meet essential standards of quality, protect their safety and respect their dignity and rights wherever care is provided, wherever they live. The core work that CQC does is to register, inspect, enforce and publish information about registered providers in relation to meeting essential standards of quality and safety. By registering, you assure patients and the government that you meet the essential standards. The detail of registration is determined by legislation set by Parliament. This is set out in the Health and Social Care Act and two sets of detailed regulations. The regulations are the bottom line and you must comply with them. CQC have produced guidance called the Essential Standards. This clarifies what it looks like when a provider is meeting the regulations. It adds more detail and will help you to understand what it means for a service. It's focused on outcomes and has been written in a way to be flexible and proportionate to make it appropriate for your service. You can get copies from our website. These are the key concepts of registration. CQC registers providers who undertake regulated activities at locations and monitors their compliance with the essential standards at each location. It's important you understand these concepts as you'll be asked about them in the form. Please remember, you'll only need to register once and everything is included in one form. A provider is the legal entity that is legally responsible for the regulated activities that are carried out and compliance with the essential standards of quality and safety. You'll need to register as one of the following types of provider, a partnership, an individual or an organisation. We expect most practices to be partnerships. A partnership is defined as a group of individuals who have formally agreed to share liabilities. Regulated activities. These are the activities related to care and treatment that require registration with CQC. You can think of them as the services you provide to patients. There are five services that we believe are most relevant to primary care. They are treatment of disease, disorder or injury, diagnostic and screening procedures, surgical procedures, maternity and midwifery services and family planning services. There are specific definitions for each, so it's important you look at them and only register the regulated activities that you provide. You only need to register the activities you provide at your location. For instance, if another provider rents a room at your practice to deliver an activity, you do not need to register it. A location is a place in which or from where regulated activities are provided or managed. In most cases, this will be your practice. If you have branch surgeries associated with the main practice and they treat patients from the same patient list, you don't need to register them as a separate location. You don't need to register all the places you visit, such as care homes. All your locations can be included on one application form. Some useful examples of different locations can be found on the CQC website. There are 28 essential standards, 16 of which are most closely linked to standards of quality and safety. They are based on the regulations set out in the Health and Social Care Act. They are essential standards, not minimum standards. The standards are written to be flexible for providers to meet, and we will be proportionate in how we apply the standards to your service. Most providers will already be meeting them, 
and will have the evidence they need to prove this. Further guidance about some of the trickier standards, such as nutrition, is available on the CQC website. Key roles. The provider is the legal entity. We covered this earlier in the presentation. The nominated individual. If you're registering as an organisation, you'll need to tell us who your nominated individual is. This will be the main point of contact with CQC. However, they do not have legal responsibility like the provider and registered manager. The registered manager. If you're a partnership, organisation or individual not in day-to-day -day charge, you will need to tell us who your registered manager is. The registered manager has joint legal responsibility for the regulated activities. So it's important you pick someone in a role that has responsibility for meeting the essential standards. In most cases, we'd expect the registered manager to be a partner. These are the key phases of registration. In July, you'll be asked to set up your registration account. From that point, you can begin filling in your form. The submission period runs from September to December 2012. Once you've submitted, we will begin assessing your application. Registration will go live from April 2013. Once you are registered, you move into ongoing monitoring. This will mean us coming to visit you. This can be a planned inspection or in response to other information we may have received. We are currently looking at our approach and working with stakeholders. We want to develop a process that works for the sector, minimises patient disruption and is best for all. We're running pilot inspections with GPs and other primary medical services this summer to develop our process. We'll tell you more about this in the autumn. In July, we will write to you with a 12-digit number that you can use to set up your online registration account. At this stage, we will ask you some basic information about who you are and where you provide services. You'll be able to select your 28-day submission window between September and December 2012. When choosing, think about what changes might be happening within your practice. For instance, a partner may be leaving or you may be relocating and choose an appropriate window for you. You can access and amend your application at any time. However, you will not be able to submit it until your submission window is open. When completing your application, you will need to select the regulated activities you carry on, which locations the regulated activities are carried on at, and who manages them at these locations. We recommend you do some preparation so you understand these concepts and how they relate to your service. You will need to declare compliance or non-compliance with each of the essential standards. You need to make sure that you have the evidence you require to declare compliance. And you may already be collecting evidence from other monitoring activities that you can use. You do not need to submit additional information with your application, but you will need this should we request it. The Essential Standards document details what compliance looks like and provides helpful guidance. If you declare non-compliance, you will need to submit an action plan. This will outline how you will improve services and become compliant. We will not necessarily refuse your application just because you declare that you are not compliant with any of the Essential Standards. Normally, we'll be able to grant registration but occasionally we may have to register with a condition. In some instances, you may not fully meet the regulations. However, as long as you have made all reasonable adjustments, then you can declare yourself as compliant. For example, if you're a leaseholder and the landlord is refusing to improve the premises. If a practice is doing everything in its power to make sure patients are not put at risk or disadvantaged, we would take this into consideration. Registered providers and registered managers must supply either a GMC number or a CQC countersigned enhanced CRB. 
Only where a provider or registered manager does not hold a GMC registration would you be required to provide a CQC countersigned enhanced CRB. We do not require other staff to have a CRB for registration. We will send you a 28-day statutory notification at the beginning of your submission window. You will then be able to submit your application any time over the next 28 days. If you have not submitted your application prior to your submission window closing, we will send you 10-day and 5-day reminders. The window system spreads the number of submissions and ensures you have the support you need during the registration process. Please note you need to submit your application within your submission window. This is to ensure protection from any legal action if your registration is not formalised prior to the 1st of April 2013. When you complete your application, you can delegate parts of the form to another person. To do this, they will need to set up an online account and they can do this at any time. Anyone can complete the form. However, one person must be responsible for the formal sign-off of the application form. This means you must make sure that it is complete and accurate, make the declaration and submit. We'll send you an acknowledgement email telling you that your application has been received. When processing your application, we will assess the information you have provided. We will also consider any other information we have received from the public or external organisations like the GMC or LINCS. If we have concerns, we will contact you to discuss them. We may ask you for additional information, arrange a fit person interview or visit your service. When we have reached a decision, we'll send a notice informing you. You have 28 days to make representations against any decision you do not agree with. Where you do not contest our decision, your registration will be applicable as of the 1st of April 2013. If you need to make changes to your registration once you've submitted your application, that's OK. You'll be able to do this with your online account from early 2013. Read and understand the regulations and the essential standards of quality and safety guidance. Think about your provider type, the regulated activities, locations and who should be your registered manager. It's important that the registered manager must be able to influence the delivery of care. In most cases, it's more appropriate for a partner to be the registered manager. Look at your internal systems and evidence. Most providers will have the evidence to demonstrate compliance with the essential standards. Identify who will lead on your application, fill it in and sign it off. You must ensure the legally responsible people understand that they are accountable for the registration and the content of your application. The provider and registered manager will need to sign and are legally accountable for their registration applications. What not to do? Please don't listen to myths and rumours. Don't pull up your carpets, rewrite all your policies or procedures and spend money on expensive consultants or audit systems. This shouldn't be necessary to complete registration. Most responsible practices will already be doing enough to ensure care is safe and that patients are well looked after. Read the key guidance documents, the overview of registration, essential standards, and the scope of registration. They are all available to download on our website. We have a team at our National Customer Service Centre that have been specifically trained about this registration process. You can contact them on email at 2012registration at cqc.org.uk. Thank you for listening.